Um, and I'm really pleased to be able to introduce um, Alison. I've heard lots about After 18, and this is the first time I've, I've met someone who's directly involved. I've even bought um, some fantastic Christmas cards, um, which have been designed by the door. On sale by the door, there we go. Um, and so Alison is the manager there, and After 18 is a local Leicester organisation, um, and which supports unaccompanied young people in, the, in Leicester in their transition to adulthood and offers information, activities, specialist support, awareness raising events and shows and art yeah, events as well. I, I, I might so, stop there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop there, so I'll take over the presentation. But, um, yeah, welcome to everyone. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that was basically my presentation, so. <laughs> um, so after 18, um, a Leicester-based charity. Um, we work with young people that are less than 25 years old, um, that have become separated from their families and have immigration issues. Now that's quite a broad um, range of young people we work with and we like to keep it fairly broad because that um, we like to see young people as young people and not define them by the policy or legal category that they've been put into. Um, but just to break that down a little bit, the types of young people that we work with are unaccompanied asylum-seeking children, um, children that have come to the UK under the Dublin Convention, so they've been brought from um, Europe to join family members in the UK um, and have, have come sort of directly to join their family members. And the range of needs of this group of children is actually quite um, broad and quite time-consuming for the casework that we do. Um, we also work with young adults, recognising that um, the legal definition of a child being at that line at 18. So, in my view, the, the support needs of an 18-year-old are not vastly different from those of a 17 and a half year old And that line cut-off is actually quite significant in the life of young people, um, in terms of what they can apply for and what support they can get, um, depending on if they're over or under that, that line. Um, and we also work with some young people that have been trafficked as well. Um, so the, the premise of After 18 was, um, Mel said, as we support that transition between childhood at under 18 and adulthood at over 18, because a lot of the services that young people will be engaging with finished at around 18, 19. So CANs, connections, some, some of the social support that they get all comes to an end and then they have to fend for themselves in the adult system. Um, and recognising that this group of children don't have the baseline understanding of life in the UK that perhaps British-born people would have at that point. Um, in terms of what we provide, um, what we provide has grown from um, recognition of the experiences that young people have and the needs that they need support with. So the first thing that we provide is an education project. Um, there are so many barriers to access in education in the UK for this group of young people. They may have had very limited or quite disrupted education in the past. When they come here, as they grow older, there are implications around funding for education. There are implications if they want to stay in education, go on to higher education, how can that be funded? And their immigration status plays quite a large part in that. Um, so we can offer advice and advocacy, we can offer support to learn English, we can offer support for homework and coaching people to get through their GCSE and A-level exams, gain all the qualifications they need to remain in education as long as they want to. Um, we have um, a casework project, so providing one-to-one -one support for young people. And that might be emotional support, it might be support to access services, to access legal services, to access healthcare, education, or it might just be to rebuild their life in the UK and access leisure services, um, things that they're particularly interested in. What, they, what the support they get completely depends on what the person is, is interested in. We also have a women's group. Um, we noticed that um, a 10% of the young people that we work with roughly are uh, female and have some different issues um, compared to the male cohort. So we created a separate space for the women to come together. Um, and these were women that were particularly isolated, maybe not mixing with their own community here for very specific reasons. Um, maybe um, several of the women from our group had disabilities and weren't able to leave the house or they were very underconfident about going out given their past experiences. So our support group uh, brings young people together to facilitate mutual support with each other, to um, 
look at building their confidence at going out to give them skills and experiences that they wouldn't otherwise have um, so that they can come together and support each other. And we're now with that group at, at the point where the young women are now taking it over and starting to run it themselves, starting to think about what they need, how they're going to move it forward, um, and to some level trying to finance it themselves as well through some of the things that they make and sell. So, as I mentioned before, we've got our store at the door. Most of the things on there have been either designed or made by the young women, and that goes back to supporting their group. Um, and the final thing that um, we do is arts and sports. So we have partnerships with lots of different local organisations like Charmwood Arts, Soft Touch, Soft Touch Arts, um, Attenborough Arts Centre that provide arts activities for the young people. Um, so, and included in that is the opportunity to get a qualification in arts award. So um, the young people that we work with, we've had the eight recently go through Bronze Arts Award. Um, which carries UCAS points, which then boosts their application to university. Um, we also recognise the therapeutic value of that artwork as well for some young people. Um, and in terms of sports, we have a partnership with Leicester City, um, who have been providing, for the boys last year, they were providing football, and we're just negotiating with them now to have a girls' programme, <coughs> which we're quite excited about. Um, yeah, I think they didn't quite know what to expect when they met our girls. They thought they'd have to work quite hard to engage them, but actually the girls were saying to them, we want Red Cross, we want uh, yeah, Red Cross uh, first aid qualifications, we want a qualification for this, we want to do this. So they kind of went away with a long list of things that, that they had to sort of come back to. Um, and in terms of how we work, the most important thing is that person-centred. So we work with the person with their dreams, their aspirations, their interests, their hopes for the future, and not necessarily the label. So we're not the sort of organisation where people come for a 15-minute appointment about a specific issue and then they go away and we never see them again. When they're working with us, we're working on the need globally, holistically, to be adjusted and settle into life. <coughs> Um, the most important thing is that we're consistent as well because most of the young people, as they go through social services, they'll have lots of different key workers, lots of different support workers, lots of different um, agencies and each agency has very tight eligibility criteria and as young people change ages, they might move, they might um, have a change in immigration status, they're dropping in and out of services. Um, so our role is to continue to be that point that they can come back to if they need to, if they're not able to access something, and then look at what they need and how to plug them back into services again. And through doing that, we aim to build that support network around the young person. So they shouldn't just be coming to us for everything. We should be looking at if have they got the community support, the linguistic support that they need, have they got education, have they got leisure activities. So in doing that and helping them to build links throughout the community, we're building that support network around, um, around them. So they're feeling much more settled here and much more integrated. Um, and in terms of numbers, because I know everybody likes numbers and it's always the question I hate being, <laughs> I hate being asked. Um, since we started, we've worked with about 200 young people and 20 of those have been girls. So yeah, roughly 10% are girls, which seems to be in line with the national um, assignment figures, as far as I can make out. Um, and each month we probably see about 60 different individuals, um, either for one-to-one -one support or accessing our different activities. Okay. Thank you. This is great. <laughs>